This is Seattle United's Injury Prevention Program. First, you want to start with four cones laying across to make two lines. And as you see here, you want to jog twice to that last cone, around, and then back again. Once that is done, then we're going to go into the hip openers, which is also called open the gates. You want to make sure your chest is up. Hips are up and out, so bring that knee up to your chest and then out. On the way back, you want to close the gates or close the hips. Same thing, knees are up and out coming in. We are doing this twice just to make sure that those hips are opened. Once everybody has finished that, then we go into the quad stretch. This is dynamic, so we hold it for about three seconds and then take a few steps, switch legs. You want to make sure you have that opposite arm raised up so you can get a full stretch in the quad. And if possible, go up onto the toe on the opposite leg to get, again, that full stretch. On the way back, you just jog back. If it's a shorter line because of limited space, do it again on the way back. Once everybody is done with this stretch, then we will go into side lunge. You just want to sink into it, um, starting relatively simple, then going deeper into the stretch. You want to make sure your butt is back, knees are facing forward, feet are facing forward. You're feeling those stretch in the adductors or the inside of your legs. Once done with that stretch, jogging back. Then we go into the world's greatest stretch here. What you see is that you start with a knee hug, you hold it for about two to three seconds and immediately step forward into a lunge or making sure that your knee goes in front of your ankle. Both knees and forward hip should make a 90 degree angle, so that lunge position, and then you're going to raise your hand over your head or you can lower down and rotate. You hold this for two seconds, and then you get out of that stretch, you lean back and straighten your front leg so that you get a stretch in your hamstring, which is also the back of your leg. Hold this for two seconds, then you stand up, take a couple steps, and switch legs. We're going to do this the duration of the cone line as you see here. Once you're done with that and reach that last cone, you jog on back. Next, we're going to go into more dynamic movements. So we're going to do a side shuffle, have the two lines face each other. And so hips and knees should be bent. And we're going to sidestep or shuffle down the cone line while looking straight ahead. Go around the last cone and come back back facing the same direction. We're going to go into partner bumps. So what you have is that you're going to use each cone as a marker and you're going to have two players at a time jog out toward the cone, shuffle towards each other. They're going to jump and bump shoulders. Again, this is just a bump. It's not going in hard. It's an light tap and then you're focusing on your landing. You want to land softly on both feet and then continue jogging to the next cone and repeat. After this dynamic stretching and movement, you're going to have your team walk up to the last cone and spread out evenly about six feet apart and we're going to start the strength portion. First one is going to be hip bridges, so we're starting on our backs, our feet are on the ground, knees are bent, you want to make sure the feet are not together, shoulder width apart, and as you see here, you are going to raise the hips up towards the sky, squeezing your glutes, and then come back down slowly. You want to make sure that your hips are level, not one side dropping to the other, also, do not arch the back, so there is a limit to how high you go up. 
Once you're at the top, you hold this for two seconds and then lower it down. You want to repeat about eight or ten repetitions. Once you finish with that, you're going to go into the front plank. You want to lay down on the ground, supporting yourself on your forearms and feet. If this is too difficult, then drop those knees down. You want to lift your body so that you are only on those forearms and toes, or knees if needed. Your shoulder blades should be drawn back towards your spine and your elbows directly under your shoulder blades. You should, hold, you should be a straight line from head to toe. Keep your hips tucked under so your belly button is drawn in. You don't want to hike up or sink down. And you're going to hold this position for 30 seconds. Again, you should be a straight line from head to toe. Once you've done this for 30 seconds, then you're going to switch to you're going to do a side plank. You're going to lay on the ground sideways, supporting yourself with one forearm and your feet are stacked. Lift your body up so that your legs and hips are in line with your shoulder. Your elbow should be directly under your shoulder. You're going to hold this for 20 seconds. You can either put your hand on your hip or raise it up towards the sky, whichever is best for you. After you are done 20 seconds on one side, forward to the next, and repeat. 20 seconds. Once you're done with these side planks, you're going to have your players find a partner as they're going to do eccentric hamstrings. So what you're doing, one partner is going to kneel on the ground. The partner is going to kneel behind them and place their hands on your ankles person that is kneeling down on the ground going to do the work, they're going to have their hands out by their chest, keeping their body very still and straight. They're going to lean forward as one unit. You should feel your hamstrings tighten and stretch. When you feel like you're starting to break the straight line or bend forward, let yourself fall forward, catching yourself with your hands. Push yourself back up and repeat the exercise three to six times, depending on your level. Reminder, the partner that's holding the ankles put enough pressure that you can hold your partner, so best to have like-sized partners. And once you've done three to six, then switch and have the partner repeat those exercises. After everybody has finished this, you're going to stand up and do squats. As you see here, you want to stand with your feet hip width apart and your hands on your hips or out in front of you. So we bend your hips back and knees forward until your knees are bent at about 90 degrees if you're going to sit on a bench. Don't let your heels come up or knees go past your toes. You also want to keep that chest up facing forward. Then straighten your whole body back to a starting position. You want to repeat this 10 times. As you're doing this, you want to make sure those knees stay over the toes. They're not coming in or they're not going out. You're keeping those heels on the ground. After this, you want to do single leg balance. Doing this without using that other leg to push down. You want to hold this for 10 seconds. Make sure to have a slight bend in the knee so your leg is not locked out. After 10 seconds, you're going to switch sides. If it is too easy to do this, then close your eyes for an extra challenge. Once you've done this twice on both sides, then you're going to go into a single leg squat. You want to stand on one leg with your knee slightly bent, just like a Regular squat, your, your hip and knee should go directly over your ankle and your hip should go straight back as if you're going to sit on a bench. Your opposite leg is going to be straight out in front of you. You can use it as a crutch if needed. You're going to bend your knee slowly until it's bent to about 90 degrees or to where you can do it. Straighten your knee back out and slowly stand up to your starting position. Repeat this four to six times on each side. 
Next, you're going to do lateral hops. Stand on one leg, bend your ankle, knee, and hips slightly. Jump as far as you can sideways while able to maintain balance. Side to side of the cone. Land softly and on the balls of your feet, stabilize, and then jump to the other side. You want to repeat this for 30 seconds. Once you're done, have everybody return to the starting point. What you will be doing is high skips, so you're trying to go as high as possible all the way down to the last cone. Same thing on the way back. Drive that knee up as high as you can, pushing off those toes. After that, you're going to bound. Similar to running or striding out, but you're going to allow yourself to float in the air for as long as possible by pushing off your toes. And then go all the way down to that last cone and on the way back. Next, you're going to forward and backward run. So you're going to run about 85% of your maximum speed to the first cone, jog backwards, then run to the next cone, jog backwards, and run through the last cone. Once you've gone past that last cone, then you jog back. Remember, on your back pedals, it's a quick shift moving those feet so you don't get caught. Lastly, you're going to plant and cut, keeping those knees and ankles aligned. Once you hit that first cone, you're going to sprint forward to that last cone and jog back. You will repeat this twice. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please reach out to Jasmine, Seattle United's athletic trainer.